So we will have a short talk um, from from Sam uh, Samuel from the Future Society. Also, uh, also cannot uh, join us for uh, today, but uh, he give a uh, lovely uh, video uh, for us to to share his um, to share his wisdom uh, in a quick way. So, I would like to thank the Center for Long-Term Artificial Intelligence for inviting me to participate in this timely discussion. I would have loved to have joined live or even in person in Beijing, but the very least I could do was share a backdrop from the halls of my alma mater, Su Shimin Xu Yuan. Three years ago, I was pursuing a master's degree at Tsinghua University, and my capstone research involved administering a survey to capture Chinese perceptions towards facial recognition technology. This was an interesting topic of study, particularly for me, a U.S. citizen, as it helped me better understand how different forms of governance and cultural values present themselves in data privacy and public security. It was also intriguing because at the time of the study, new features of facial recognition technology were rapidly being developed to adapt to the social and political changes brought on by COVID-19, for instance, to identify individuals wearing face masks. Now, I thought the technological development seemed fast then, but what I did not anticipate and what has continued to keep me on my toes in addition to everyone working in the field of AI governance is just how quickly AI capabilities would progress in such a short time. In only the last few months, we've seen an array of models performing tasks that seemed to many decades away only a few years ago. This includes multimodal task completion, protein sequence prediction, and using cooperation and deception in natural language dialogues to be humans in complex games. I present these examples because I believe they signal that we may be approaching a period in which AI systems could be capable of assisting in or autonomously conducting large-scale acts of deception and harm. And I think that this concern should transcend cultures or politics. In fact, I think it needs to. This is a challenge that humanity faces. It would even do us well to treat this as an opportunity for great power cooperation. I will end with three points that I think we should act on, regardless of culture or, or politics. First, we have to hold AI research labs accountable for instituting responsible, differential technological development practices. This means prioritizing safety, interpretability, and alignment research over raw capabilities advancement. For too long, we have witnessed an abuse of the term innovation in the pursuit of business interests, instead of behavior that aligns with human rights and values. Second, we should encourage our political institutions to cooperate on benchmarks, data privacy standards, and risk management frameworks that serve the public interest. These are only pieces of the bigger governance puzzle, but they play significant roles in steering capital allocation, and thus they can be meaningful, uh, impactful avenues for mitigating risks. Finally, we should seek to create and participate in opportunities such as this one to discuss what cross-cultural AI governance means in practice. Because even if we manage to prevent the creation of a misaligned power-seeking AI system in one discrete geographic region, it will do us no good if it is developed elsewhere. Let me be clear, this is not an exhaustive list of actionable steps, but merely first steps to steer AI developers, investors, and regulators towards more responsible behavior. I commend the Center for Long-Term Artificial Intelligence for organizing events such as this, and I hope that this event is only the first of many, and that those that are here today continue to stay meaningfully engaged. Thank you, uh, Samuel, for uh, for the for the intervention uh, in a nice way. Samuel was joined my uh, team um, uh, as a master uh, student in Schwarzman Scholar in, in Tsinghua uh, University. And the cases that he mentioned about the facial recognition study during public for public um, uh, health is uh, his work uh, when, when he was a master's student in in in, in Beijing. Uh, so the, the the program, the Schwarzman program, and also the Yanqing Scholar, where uh, the need was part of, um, uh, is um, I think our. Um, interesting trials, which really bring a cross-cultural context uh, um, 
um, for um, young leaders like the need when the need was even younger as a student. Um, so um, we are grateful to have uh, Sam and in, and also the need in here who truly have an experience in, in in China to interact with Chinese friends and also to you know bring uh, their observations um, of um, of of their understanding about China to the world and help and help China to uh, uh, for global um, dialogues. 